Okay, the next question is from this video, how to make natto from a wild plant by natto king. I'm thinking about purchasing an instant pot for this using one appliance, using one appliance for both steaming and soybeans, both steaming the soybeans and then fermenting them. Do you think that will work? Your natto questions answered. Hi, my name is Sachiaki Takamiya, the natto king. I am the author of Natto and the and the Ikigai Diet. Okay, so I have been receiving so many comments. Yeah, but I'm sorry I have not been able to answer all those comments. I've been quite busy. Yeah, actually, it is quite hard to upload videos three times a week. Yeah, it kind of takes a whole day to make a video because you know, I have to think of the content, then I have to prepare the PowerPoint presentation. And then to do that, I need to, you know, find some good pictures and stuff like that. And then uh, after making the PowerPoint, you know, presentation, I have to shoot the video, which I need to do like several takes. Yeah. And then I need to do the editing and everything. And then I need to make, you know, thumbnail and everything. And it, it does take a lot of time. So now I started doing, you know, like a three times a week video upload. It's been taking a lot of my time. And on top of that, I'm doing a book editing at the moment. So yeah, I'm sorry that I have not been able to answer uh, many of your comments. Yeah. So today I am taking this opportunity to answer some of your questions. And but I'm focusing on Natto today. So I just picked some, you know, question you asked me about Natto and I'll answer them. So Please watch the video until the end. Okay, so natto Q and A. Okay. Um, so the first question is, it's a for my video called How to Make Natto from a Wild Plant by Natto King. By the way, this is the most popular video. I think many of the questions, you know, come from this video. Yeah. Now, so the question is, I wanted to make natto, but it was impossible to get natto or natto starter that day. So I froze all my cooked soybeans. I wonder if I can unfreeze some and try your plant method. Do you think this is possible? Right. Okay. So, well, depending on how you cooked those soybeans, yeah, because the bean needs to be quite soft, yeah. But you, you may want to try that, yeah? So you, you first unfreeze those soybeans, and then I would steam them again, yeah? Um, I would steam them again to make sure that the bean becomes soft enough. Plus, uh, you, you need to make the beans very hot. It's important, to, it's important for the beans to be very hot when you put them in the yogurt maker, yeah? So, yeah, you need to either boil or steam, uh, the soybeans again to make them hot and then also it becomes moisturous as well yeah and then try that to see what happens yeah uh, for anything it always you know good to experiment yeah so uh, to try it and then then tell us what happens yeah thank you for asking the question the next one uh, this is from how to make natto at home, the complete guide. Now, this video I made kind of recently, and this is the complete guide. So if you watch the previous one, the one about, you know, making natto from wild plant, uh, this one is more complete, yeah? Now, the question is, dear Ikigai man, I live in Bangladesh and rice is the staple food here. What do you say about dry rice store is what exactly? Is it after harvesting and taking out the uh, rice from rice tree? Whatever yellow color dry stem left out? How to remove pesticides and fertilizers used in the paddy field during harvesting? And don't you think reduce remain in the rice, tr rice tree even after drying it off? Thanks. Please educate on this. Right. So first of all, yeah, rice toro I'm referring, I think yeah, your description is right. That is correct. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about, rice toro. Yeah. After harvesting and then after threshing the rice, so the rice is kind of taken out and then you just use any part of uh, the toro. Right. Yeah. 
Now, as far as pesticide is concerned, yeah, do not use uh, that storo. Yeah, you 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 need to use only organic rice storo. Yeah, so if the rice is grown organically, you can use the storo. But if the rice is grown using chemical, you know, agricultural chemicals, then you cannot use them. In fact, uh, now in Japan, not many people make natto at the home. Although many people make miso at home. I mean, miso is still a common practice, especially in the countryside among farmers. You know, people who kind of still do farming in the countryside, they often make miso at home, but they don't make natto. The reason is because organic rice toro is not available anymore. N not so much anyway. You know, so that is why people stopped making natto at home. So please use organic rice toro for making natto. Okay, so how to make natto from a wild plant by nut? Okay, the next the next question is uh, from this video, how to make natto from a wild plant by natto king. So should the cloth be dry when you put it on top of the beans in the yogurt maker, or should it be wet to help keep the beans moist? Uh, if it if it is wet, how wet should it be? Thank you. Okay. So when you make natto, you put the steamed soy beans into a yogurt maker, and then you cover it with a cotton cloth like this. So the question is whether the cross should be wet or not. Um, usually I use a wet cross, but it, I suppose you can use a dry one as long as the beans is moisturous. Yeah, if you steam beans, usually beans has a lot of moisture. So even though you put a dry cross, it probably, you know, doesn't matter. I mean, you know, there will be a moist inside the container. Yeah. But better if you use maybe wet one, yeah. Um, when you make natto for the first time, make sure you kind of disinfect the cloth in a boiling water, yeah, which I showed you in the video. Uh, the, the, no, please watch the, the complete guide one, you know, uh, making natto the complete guide that has this one. And then... Um, yeah, um, but but from maybe the, the third time or the fourth time, like, you know, you have been making natto for a while, then you don't need to worry too much about disinfecting. You just uh, kind of wash the cross with hot water. That may be okay. Yeah. Okay, the next question, uh, again from this video, how to make natto from a wild plant by natto king. Can I achieve the same result using curry leaf stems from my terrace garden? So curry leaves, these are curry leaves, right? I've never made natto using curry leaves, but I suppose you can, yeah, because Bacillus subtilis, you know, the natto king, usually, you know, exists in most wild plants. As long as the plants are edible, yeah, uh, I'm sure you can probably, but, you know, again, Try it. Try it and see what happens. Okay. So another question. Uh, again, this is from the same video. How to make natto from a wild plant by Natto King. Uh, best regards to you from Poland. I started making natto from powder I bought on Air, Air Express. I have a problem when I make natto from powder. Everything is fine. But when I try to make natto using the previous natto, uh, for example, fermented soybeans, the natto doesn't work. What I am doing wrong, can you give me a hint? Regards, I'm sorry if something is not understandable. I'm writing it using a translator. Um, I don't know what kind of powder you got, uh, but I suppose you're talking about a natto, you know, starter spore, right? Um, Okay, but you were successful at making that all bad, but using uh, the one that you made, yeah, as a starter to make the next batch uh, wasn't successful, right? Okay, so um, now, 
So the tips for using homemade natto as a starter, uh, it depends on the condition of the natto, yeah? Um, okay, so use fresh natto, yeah? Natto that has been sitting in the refrigerator for more than a week may not be as effective as a starter, yeah? So because often when you make your homemade natto, the condition is not always perfect and how you store is not always perfect yeah so therefore you need to use the best uh, you need to use natto in their best state um so use clean natto make sure that your homemade natto is free from any mold or other con uh, con contaminants right um but one thing about fermentation is you need to try several times sometimes when you do it once, it may not work. It happens with any method. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But you need to kind of try a few times to see uh, what happens. But usually, you should be able to make natto from your homemade natto. Yeah? And then for details, please watch this video. Can you use homemade can you use homemade natto as a starter? Yeah, natto's fermentation process, Q&A. The next question is from this video. What happens to people over 60 if they eat natto every day? Uh, if, if I make natto with beans instead of soy, does it also generate natto kinase? Right. So... You can make natto using other beans, such as, you know, kidney beans, you know, azuki beans and, and, and chickpeas and so on, yeah? And the answer is no. It does not generate natto kinase. You still have the benefit of natto king, you know, this uh, natto bacteria and, you know, vitamin K2 and, and stuff like that, but not natto kinase. Natto kinase is unique to so, so, soy beans. Right. And then for details, please please watch my video. Can you make natto from other beans? Now, next question is from this short video. I made a mistake about natto and tempeh. Yeah. So um question is thank you. So it is safe to eat hundred grams of natto daily. Uh, yes, it is. It is safe. Yeah. And then, um, so for details, I made a video. Uh, can you eat natto too much? What is the appropriate amount of eating natto per day? Um, yeah, 100 grams is okay. Yeah. And my advice is 50 gram of natto is the most appropriate amount. Yeah. 50 gram is about one pack of natto. But in Japan, usually it is considered to be safe to consume two packs of natto a day, up to two packs, up to 100 grams. So 100 grams is still a safe range. Okay, so how to make natto at home? The, oh yeah, the, the, sorry. The next question is from this video, how to make natto at home, the complete guide. I absolutely loved all your videos on natto. Oh, thank you very much. But I have one question. Natto is not local to me as I live in India. So will it provide even half of the benefits it provides to the Japanese population as it is local to them? Now, so that is a good question because I promote Shindo Fuji, eating locally, eating seasonally. Therefore, it is usually good to find some local ingredient and local food, right? So if you, you know, want to practice Sindo Fuji completely, then you don't need to eat natto. If natto is falling to you, then there's no reason that you should eat natto. There are plenty of other superfood in your region, yeah, in your dietary culture, um, you know, that, that are beneficial. So if you, you don't need to eat natto, yeah. However, um, so will it provide even half of the benefit? Yeah, I should think so. I mean, more than half, probably 
it still provides, I would say maybe 70 to 80% of the NATO benefit, even though NATO is not local to you. Yeah, because, um, so I promote Sindo Fuji. I promote, you know, eating local food and stuff. But when, you, uh, when it comes to health benefit, yeah, when you think of the science, right, all those, you know, nutrients such as, you know, natto kinase, vitamin K2, spermidine, and, you know, and the benefit of natto in itself, natto bacteria itself, they, they are relevant for anyone, basically. Yeah, so you still get the benefit of those from NATO, even though NATO is not available locally. Yeah, so therefore I would say uh, maybe seventy to eighty percent, but not one hundred percent because it's not local, right? Um, it's depending on your how your diet is. Like if you're sticking to all local foods, then you don't need to include NATO. But if your di diet is already like a mixing with, you know, everything, you know, ingredients from, you know, different regions and stuff like that. And then avoiding just natto won't make any difference. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're including some food from far away, then, yeah, why not natto as well? Yeah, because natto has such a tremendous health benefit, it's a kind of a city to, you know, miss it out. Right. Um. The next question is from this video, how to make natto from wild, wild plant by natto king. Hi, Ikigai. Would dried mint stems be more effective in natto fermentation? Right. Okay. So, yeah, I made natto using mint and it worked, but usually Bacillus subtilis yeah, contains more in dried plant. And that is why uh, usually it is better to use you know, rice straws and wheat straws and because they are dried, yeah? So from that point of view, um, yeah, I think so. If you dry mint stalks in your, you know, yard or, or you know, anywhere, and then, yeah, that probably may increase the amount of Bacillus subtilis, yeah? So that's a good idea, yeah? Uh, please try it. Uh, the next question uh, is from this video, how to make natto from a wild plant by natto king. Any wild plant stems, you call it straws, will do or it must be mint stems. Arigato, right. Um, well, no, uh, of course, yeah, any any plants are okay. No, it's kind of funny because I, I used mint because I happen to have mint in my garden. And that's the only reason I used mint because mint was available. In fact, at that time, the mint were kind of growing wildly, you know, a lot in my garden. So I just plenty of them. So I, I used the mint, yeah. But usually, Bacillus subtilis, yeah, uh, are in most wild plants, yeah. Um, so... Uh, but more in dried plants. So in that sense, mint is not the best option, as I said before. Yeah. So the good uh, plants to use for natto making are rice straw, wheat straw, corn straw. And also make sure that you use edible plants from your garden. Yeah. So any kind of herb, something like edible, but do not use any plants you know, that you don't know whether you can eat them or not. So f f choose edible plants from your garden and choose plants. Those are, uh, you know, chemical free. Yeah. Because in, in your garden, maybe it should be okay because you don't use chemicals, right? In your garden. But if you pick a wild plant from a street or somewhere, you, you never know. You know, some people use, uh, you know, chemicals to, um, you know, get rid of the weed and stuff like that. So, yeah, find a safe wild plant, uh, and especially dried ones. For details, uh, please watch this video: how to make natto at how to make natto at home. Uh, yeah, the, the actual title is "How to Make Natto at Home: The Complete Guide." Okay, the next question 
is from this video, how to make natto from a wild plant by Natto King. I'm thinking about purchasing an instant pot for this using one appliance, using one appliance for both steaming and soybeans, both steaming the soybeans and then fermenting them. Do you think that will work? Yeah, uh, many people these days use instant pot uh, for natto making. I have never used it personally, so I don't really know how it works. But by watching some other videos that people have made, yeah, it seems to work. So so why not? Yeah. The difference um, you know, between this and my method is I use a regular pressure cooker to pressure steam the soybeans, which I use gas. But I think instant pot is all electricity. So that's the kind of difference. But I am using electricity when I ferment the beans in the yogurt maker. So it won't make that much difference. So if you prioritize the simplicity and convenience, which, which is important because you want to make natto regularly, you don't want to make it too complicated. Yeah. So easy method is sometimes helpful. It is more practical. So in that sense, yeah, sure, why not? Uh, go ahead and, and, and try it. Okay, so those are the uh, yeah, answers that for, for today, yeah? Yeah, and for uh, DIY natto, how to make natto at home, you can watch those other videos, but also you can read my book, Natto Unleashed. And the book also contains other useful information about natto, such as health benefits of natto, recipes, tons of recipes, yeah? So if maybe you want to eat some natto for Christmas and choose some recipes from the book for that. And then navigating natto's taste and natto hacking. Okay, thank you for watching. Again, my name is Hachiaki Takamiya. I am the author of Natto Unleashed and the Ikigai Diet. If you like this video, please give me your thumb up and subscribe to my channel. And please leave your comment. I'm sorry I may not be able to answer your comment, but you know, if you have any more questions after watching this video and so on. All right, I will see you in the next video. Ibu Dio Ikigai!